So day one, uh, we get up there, we get all, you know, hooked up with my buddy. He loaned us a forerunner. Day one, we get up, and I kind of had a vicinity where I knew the area just for me being up there working. But when I lived there, I didn't do any predator hunting. Oh. I know. Don't, don't I, you just wish you could oh take all that back? Goodness, yes. You lived up in one of the Meccas. Yes. Didn't even <laughs> yes. Didn't even know it. And because I did, I lived up there in the wintertime all the way through December and I could, I could have been killing a lot of them. Yeah. But, and that's, that's one reason why I don't want to go back. I was like, I, I missed my opportunity back then. So I'm going to do it now. Yeah. So we go and we're trying to cut, you know, I'm just finding good spots and there's, there's really no hardly getting off the beaten path. Right. Because so I mean, what's the temperature? How much snow is on the ground? Bunch of snow up to, I mean, you could have places up to your waist. Yeah. Um, and it was actually a mild winter compared to what they're used to. Yeah. Um, there gets to a point though where the snow's so deep and you know it kind of it'll freeze and then you know gets so you can still walk on it. But there are several places. Most of it was about knee high or about you know mid thigh. Yeah. We our our goal was just work this road and find good spots that look catty, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna treat it just like I'm hunting bobcats. Yeah. They're the same in my opinion, uh, yeah. just a different world yeah. up there. What's the temperature? 20 below. 20 below. <laughs> Fitzy might have to put I on think some pants it, for that I think one. it warmed up that week to, I think, 12 below. But it got down to, there's one morning it was 27 below. Is it, what's the wind like? Is it calm? Hardly or? any. Oh, where, that, where we're at, it's. That's going to help a lot. Mm-hmm, where we're at, it's, it's kind of in a hole in we did travel out further north and mm-hmm. did get on a summit. I don't can't remember what summit that was, but it was it was kind of windy up there. But other than that, it's it's like a less than five mile an hour. Yeah. So it's it's barrel. If if it was windy, it would be <laughs> be pretty mm-hmm. be pretty brutal. But yeah, most most of the time, I mean, it warm up during the day to fifteen below or whatever. It's it's really if you're if you're prepared for it, right. Um, it's not that bad because I, I actually had some custom made mittens, coat mm-hmm. coat fur on the back, yeah. bobcat on the bottom, yeah. really sweet, warm. And there are several stands, and I'm just wearing wool liners underneath. There are several stands I'd take that off. Of course, I did also wanted to take it off in case right. I was surprised and yeah. didn't want to have to make that move. And I was able to just sit there for on stand for you know 45 minutes mm-hmm. with with just a wool liner. So y'all are just uh. You're traveling down a certain road. You're are you looking for tracks and we are looking, looking for good looking spots. Good looking spots and tracks. And so most of them, we just find like, oh, that looks pretty catty. So we'd park the truck, get off in there. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of them stands, it took longer to get to the spot. Yeah. I mean, we're walking in you know deep snow, and then make a forty five minute stand. It's taking longer to get out of there. <laughs> But most of the time, we we did cut several tracks. Well, on the fourth stand, it's probably and you know each stand is taken anywhere from an hour to as we're sitting there forty five minutes minimum. Yeah, from that to an hour and a half. Yeah. So, in a five and a half hour day, we're only making about four or five stands. <laughs> so, four stand, we pass a river, frozen river, and I just kind of look off to the left, and I was like, I just seen a some tracks yeah so we turn around park the truck get off in there the wind wasn't ideal but again i'm treating it like i'm hunting bobcats right. yeah uh, i'm not saying you don't have to worry about the wind because they do go down wind yeah but it's not the end of the world right i'm okay with you know the wind not having it right yeah so we go down there and on the way in I cut two lynx tracks and a wolf track I can't tell how fresh they are, but they're very good tracks. Right. And my hand to it is, I mean, it, it almost took my hand up. The more right. tracks did. I'm blown away. <laughs> <laughs> my buddy falls down the hill, making all sorts of racket. <laughs> and we just cut two tra- or three, three different tracks. And I look mm-hmm. back and I'm like, I'm trying not to laugh, you know, and there's, it's so quiet out there. Yeah. There's, you can hear everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, just like anything, you know, you slam the car door, you're just like, well, the stand's over. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, dude. Yeah. He's falling. He's making all, he's putting snow all over his gear. And 
I help him up. <laughs> I'm like, I thought you were a Navy SEAL, dude. You're not even, <laughs> you're not even athletic. <laughs> and we get down there, and I think it was 11 minutes in. I'm, I'm running my, my e caller. I, I actually, no, I take that back. I started out with hand calling for the first four minutes, and then I swap over to my e caller, and I have my buddy on his on my right. And we're we're looking off into that frozen river that I saw tracks. We're backed mm-hmm. up against the sea, uh, black spruce trees. And next thing I know, I just happen to see something to my left, and I freeze. And then it it moves a little further out into the river, heading you know straight in front of us. Yeah, don't know don't have a clue where where we are. Yeah, and I look to my left, and there's a huge lynx standing on top of the snow like barely making footprints in it. Right. And it, this snow is up to our thighs yeah. for us to walk through. Yeah. And he is floating on top. Yeah. And I, my, I'm, I wanted to bring a camera <laughs> so yeah. bad on this that trip. Pretty awesome. But I kept telling myself, I'm like, I do not want to screw up this. I was like, next yeah. time I go, yeah, I'll yeah. bring a camera. I've, I, I accomplished my goal. So I stopped the, Stop the collar and keep in mind I shoot left handed. So yeah. my gun is facing towards the collar. And for in order for me to move to yeah. my nine o'clock or ten o'clock, it's not happening without getting busted. Yeah. I am ambidextrous. So though I've made those shots before. Right. He he proceeds, he kind of hunkers down, scurries a little bit on the snow, about 10, 15 feet, stops again. So I shoulder to my right, just sl- just and I lean over, and I drop him 18, 19 yards away. Oh, it would have been nice to have a camera. I know. And it took me a second. Oh, yeah. I'm first happy. day, fourth stand, like, to gather this all in. <laughs> I mean, I I look at my buddy, Jake, and I'm like, can you believe that? And he's, he saw it all. Like, he yeah. – he, and he's he had, he hadn't done much uh, predator hunting, but he he was all over this hunt. Yeah. So we get it, and this is the biggest cat I've ever seen. And I'm I'm blown away how they float on top yeah. of that snow. It's unreal, and which makes sense. I'm like, you know, you see them on videos. They're running. They're chasing rabbits. And I'm like, how do they not you know break yeah. through that? It's because this is a forty pound cat. Yeah. You know, and it actually that was a they get bigger. They get yeah. fifty pounds up there, yeah. and his paws, you know, I took a picture on my hand and it, it yeah. just, you couldn't see my palm yeah. at all. There's fur on the bottom. You mm-hmm. couldn't even see its pads. It's, it's completely unreal how they live in that and how they maneuver through all that snow. Yeah. So we get done. We actually took a break after that and ate some mountain house and out of the back of the truck and, <laughs> you know, just living the dream. Just, yeah. Oh yeah. It uh, takes a lot of pressure. It does. I was, I was blown away. And of course he's stoked and we <laughs> go back, you know, just enjoy the evening with my, with my other buddy where we're staying. And next day we get up, let's rock, rock and roll. We're going to stop where we well, actually, the last stand of the day, we saw some other tracks. We got down there with a lot of them was uh, moose and, <laughs> Made a stand and it we did we sat there and called till it, we couldn't see anymore. Get up and we head to the house. Next morning, I said we'll just start right here and work further down this road. Well, as we're driving by, that's that last stand. I see two sets of tracks that wasn't there yesterday. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, which there's a good twelve hour window there. Yeah, and you know, hunting wolves like you you got to get off. You you really need a snow machine to get off in there and the trying to chase them like 12 hours they're probably 20 miles away you know they travel so much and so but we went ahead and made that stand just see what happened but there was two fresh tracks for over over the top of ours Mm -hmm. from the day before we didn't call nothing in Uh, i used a lot of you know cow pup and cow fights and stuff try to get a little aggressive but uh didn't see nothing on that one make it about I don't know, 20 miles. We're, and we're kind of, we're driving a little bit, you know, we're being real selective with our stance. Right. We're not just, right. is, this ain't contest of, Oh, that looks good. Oh, let's just pull over every mile. Yeah. You know I mean, we're, we got a lot of country up there to, 
you know, <laughs> to hunt. So we go and uh, very last stand. It couldn't have got if if you picture the cattiest place. I mean, you've you've been on hundreds of ranches, and you're like, ooh, that looks catty. Ooh, that yeah. looks catty. <laughs> picture the best stand scenario. Yeah, where you have a little bit of open, real thick draws, a frozen creek running through. I mean, just. I, I took pictures of the place and we get in there and there's this little rolling knoll and kind of a, about a five foot drop off. Well, I told my buddy to sit and just watch that direction. And then I get over this little two track road we had walked in on. I sit on the other side. So he's at my back. I can't even look over this hill that I'm sitting on top of. And I'm calling, I'm calling, I'm calling. And it's getting close to dark. And I was like, man, it's been, 23 minutes and we're running out of daylight and i was like man we might as well just pick up and leave well i stand up i think this is the fifth stand of the second day last one so i stand up and as soon as i do my sticks are still in the snow i stand up and and i'm through my rifle on my shoulder and i look over at him and i didn't even get to to his direction and i'm like i freeze because there's a lynx staring at my e-caller and it's like 40 yards from me yeah. And I look at him and he's not even, he don't see it. <laughs> so me, of course, I'm just like, I got to shoot it. It's going to yeah. get away, you know? <laughs> so I, I knew that I couldn't get back down on my sticks and yeah. get them out and make them too much racket. So I just try to freehand shot, shoot this lynx and I miss. And I'm not the best shot in the world, but <laughs> <laughs> it blew my mind how I missed. Yeah. Which, you know, most close shots are the ones you miss, yep. and it's the long ones that you're like, oh, no big deal. Well, I miss, but he as soon as he sees me throw my gun up, he looks in that direction. I miss. This lynx didn't give two cents my direction and proceeds to go to the collar. So he, he just hunkers down and gets real quick yeah. on the snow, heading towards the collar. And that's when he see. I guess he cleared that little – drop right. and he could see him and then he smokes him puts him down right there and looking back at it i'm I, if i were to ever be glad that i ever missed right. yeah that's that it yep. i've never been okay with missing yeah ever until that that moment yeah. that, that's probably going to be the only one unless i shoot <laughs> something and then my, my kids will shoot it you know yeah or shoot at something but yeah I, i'm so glad i missed because we didn't we didn't see another lynx or yeah. anything the rest of the trip, but we went up there. We did what our goal was set out yeah. to be. We are allowed to, so if you ever go, you're allowed to. But we we hunted a lot, but it put the the stress. The rest of the trip was great. We still called, but enjoyed ourselves. Right. It wasn't it wasn't it's a different. very stressful because I've I've been on trips where you hunt and you hunt and you hunt and you might.